live from New York. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Rapid Miner Wisdom 2016. Brought to you by Rapid Miner. Now, your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to Rapid Miner Wisdom 2016. We're here at the Eventi Hotel in New York City. Boris Scheringer is here. He's the director of IT audit at, at Siemens. Boris, thanks very much for coming in theCUBE. And Good to be here. Welcome to America. Thank you. Great to have you here. So, um, very interesting background. We were talking off camera. Uh, you've done model-driven architectures, uh, 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 SOA, process management, ITIL. We're here at a data science con uh, conference. What's an audit person doing here? <laughs> That's a good question. No, I mean, uh, audit really benefits from an analytical approach, from a data scientist driven approach. Audit is really something where, you know, it's, it's hard to get opinion out of, of s all sorts of audit discussions that you have. If you do audits in many areas, they are interview driven or they used to be interview driven. So data s science adds so much value to our daily audit work by sort of replacing opinion by facts, working evidence-based, and that's how data mining uh, and process mining comes actually into our daily work. So Siemens, huge company, complex organization. When you think about auditing, you think about you know, the, the bread and butter every day, you know, yeah. financial auditing and, yeah. and reporting and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, so talk about the scope of your activities. That's obviously beyond that. Yeah. It clearly is. So, so we are globally around uh, 300 auditors worldwide, w working really on a global base. And of course, this type of hygiene, this hygiene, hygiene type of audit, yeah, financial systems and processes, reporting guidelines, that's, that's an important part of our audit work, but not the only one. So maybe it makes up 70 to 80 percent of our work, but then there is 20 to 30 percent of our work, which is really going out to business units, helping them to become more efficient, helping them to detect root cause issues in their process quality, in their throughput, in their lead times, in factories, and all of that stuff is really based on us being able to consult, to be responsive to their needs, to understand uh, their processes, their business domain, and then make an analytical difference um, by a highly skilled, highly, highly analytical stuff and the weapons, the analytical weapons of data science. So are you a service organization for the lines of business or are you a CEO big brother? Or <laughs> we are a bit of both yeah. actually <laughs> and sometimes that's uh, an interesting balance. Um, but actually by being service oriented, even if you're in a governance function, you can be very service orientated and, and you feel with the res you know, responses coming from business units that we can really be helpful and then we are regarded as being helpful. And your data sources are, I pr presume, a combination of internal and external, but a lot of internal data. Is that, is that fair yeah, to say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just as a side note, Siemens has around 280 <laughs> SAP systems out there, right? <laughs> oh um, which is an uh, incredible number. Yeah. Uh, lucky us, they are pretty standardized. But you know, that's an incredible source of transactional data. You know, whether it's on sales, whether it's on procurement, whether it's on payments, whether it's on sort of factory scheduling and all of that stuff. And that's the main source that we use when it comes to efficiency and process consulting. And then obviously if we in our audit work are uh, going for, you know, fraud, fraud detection and, and, and uh, stuff like that, we are using other data sources as well. Right, okay, so uh, you've got this, um massive amount of data from all over the organization, mm -hmm. and your objective, you know, you're applying data science mm -hmm. to what end? What's the business obje objective? Is it to help optimize the lines of business, to yeah. identify, like you said, fraud? I mean, a lot of different use cases. Yeah, we have indeed a lot of different use cases. That's why um, our data analytical wor work in our audit department is, um, is big in size, actually, out of these 300 people, uh, 70 people are in the IT practice of our internal uh, audit. Yeah, 70 sort of data scientist people. And um, we, we do all sorts of stuff, like fraud detection and, and, and others, plus this efficiency-related uh, process. How much of your effort is on those types of use cases, you know, uh, to, you know business outcome driven, you know, detecting fraud or other, you know, churn or quality, et cetera, versus applying data science to improve improve your predictive 
capabilities, if I can, if that question makes sense. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a 50-50 thing. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah. So a fair cut, amount cut, to, cut, to, cut to, to each. And, and, and are you providing data science services uh, to the line of business to help them improve their, their predictive capabilities, or is it more? So, so far, they would be approaching us uh, sort of problem-driven, yeah? We, we seem to have an issue here in that area, in that factory, in, you know, with the quality of those products. So, audit, can you help us? And then we would actually step in and help them, and typically, a big portion of our help is working out a strategy to approach it data-driven, evidence-driven, which then brings all the sort of data science stuff. So very interesting, the concept then is you've got visibility over the entire organization, you've got the data, so let's put some data, inject some data science skills and then give you that yeah. charter. Yeah, because you kind of answer, I was going to say, where did it come from? When did you move from doing kind of the financial audit and the majority of your business to, to helping in these other areas? Because I would think at first blush they would look at you as you know, kind of part of accounting and part of audit, and are we doing our, our thing, versus being, you know, experts in the field of data science and being able to apply that to their problems compared to, as we saw in the keynote, all the old school guys in that particular division that yeah. are working on intuition and the way we've always done it and, yeah. you know, their traditional tools. Yeah. So, did you see the opportunity and say, hey, we can help you leveraging these? Or did they say, we need help, we've tried everything, or is there some marginal, economics that you guys can squeeze out that you see through your auditing process? Well, I, I, first of all, I think it has been um, a huge journey. Siemens had this corruption scandal in 2007 that when really a global audit organization was sort of founded and the focus after 2007 was really to get that sorted. And then maybe three to four years later, we are constantly, we, we, we started to move into this you know, transformational type of activities. How can we really help business units to, to improve their efficiency and you know, operational things as well. Right, right. Um, and, and, and since then we are sort of going there and by now we have a reputation where people are actually calling us up and asking for help. Well, and, and does some of it come from you know, seeing change over time within a particular department, whether their improvements going up, their efficiencies going up, down, where you start to see patterns and say, hey, you know, we're seeing this is going the wrong way, can we help you? It's going the right way, can we accelerate it? it we saw in our, your sister organization, they're doing this, maybe you guys should do this. I mean, what are some of the dynamics? That's, actually the, the requests for help are less driven by the coming out of the traditional audits. It's more that people hear what we did in other places of the company, they sort of understand the success stories. And then that's the, that's, that's the moment when, when your telephone starts to ring. Right? So you have a backlog <laughs> of do you, do you charge for your services internally? Um, partially yes, partially no. Partially we are this audit department that is centrally funded. Yeah, but uh, in, in any case, we have uh, uh, constantly a list of, of candidate projects. You know, people knocking on our door and at any point in time, for example, uh, on this process mining area, at any point in time, we are doing two to three projects of such kind in parallel for some Siemens units out do, there. Do you, how do you prioritize those projects? Is it first in, first out, or do you, do you look at the, the business case and the ROI and the technical feasibility? How do you adjudicate? That's a, that's a non-trivial question, actually, yeah. because uh, sometimes prioritization can also be driven by um, the opportunity to educate business units of what data science can do for them. So that's not a direct return mm, on invest. It's not a, not a direct quantitative business case in the first run. Um, saving potential is certainly a factor, but then also can you, s can you plant some seeds that, that maybe will show their full potential uh, in two or three years from now because you have actually educated uh, a Siemens business unit to become data scientists themselves. So it's not a sequential, you know, you're not picking jobs, you're... It's, you're it's, it's not a pure yeah. sequential thing. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so following up on that question, what are some of the things that you've done with the business units who weren't necessarily data science, savvy is probably not the right word, but centric, yeah. to get them to, to make that turn? What are some of the things you could share that, that yeah. gets people to turn the light on and say, hmm, maybe this is a, yeah, a maybe, different way, a better maybe, way to do things. Yeah, maybe, maybe a use case that, that uh, I will be talking about later on as well here on the Rapid Miner Wisdom Conference. Um, we, we did actually a project with our regional company in Brazil about imports into that country, Brazil. Because if you are importing products, goods to Brazil, it always seems to be a lengthy, messy process with customs involved and all of that stuff. So we found out actually that only 
um, a very small percentage of import transactions would follow a direct line, you know, the shortcut into the country, and the majority of import cases would take up to 60 days, the whole process of importing goods into Brazil, um, where sort of in, a, in a best case you can do it in two weeks yeah, or, or 20 days. And so we were trying to understand uh, the full process, including customs and paperwork and SAP transactions, to identify root causes, why the majority of the cases would take so long. And simply by doing that, we could develop a very, very concrete set of actions and measures, some related to training, some related to SAP configuration topics, whereby now the majority of those cases is following the ideal path, the fast track into the country. You talked before, about, uh, Boris, about educating the lines of business on the potential of data science. So I infer from that that your strategy is not simply to do projects that support you know, the business units, but to to actually teach them how to fish, if you will, so they can develop ac applications and, and predictive solutions to improve their business. So it, 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 assuming that's the case, um, when you look at 280 SAP systems, systems of record, essentially, are you, do you see yourselves building uh, analytics, predictive analytics systems that are extensions of those systems of record? In other words, bringing analytics to those transaction systems? Or do you see them as more you know, separate greenfield applications? I think there's a strong trend in actually integrating analytics directly with transactional systems, yeah? Part of our process mining engine is also, you know, now coded into Subhana and in memory and all mm -hmm. of that stuff on one side. On the other side, it's really in many cases about asking the right question and it's asking the right question needs so much work in advance that, you know, including analytical prototypes, if you, if you like, um, that, that it is a project-driven approach, and sometimes you develop those sort of autonomous project solutions for your analytical work, because the question is just so specific. So there's an overall trend, and then there's reality of how it's done today. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah? And that is basically sort of having a separate analytical nucleus uh, project driven. And, and that's a great point because so much, so much is said often that you know, this, this vision that you can just throw the data, throw the data into Hadoop and the magic will, will come out, right? But, but really, as you <laughs> said, you really need to know the question or at least start with a question it's and about, start with a hypothesis exactly. and then maybe exactly. work your way to a journey that yeah. wasn't specifically where you thought you were going to end the, up. And the question is domain knowledge specific, right? You need hmm. to be sitting in the middle of a factory to fully understand what this is about, right? Whether it's engineered to order or whether it's, it's mass production of a, of a product, right? And, and all, in, you know, even just these two use cases, engineered to order and mass production, is so different. It's so different in how SAP systems are configured. It's so different in, in how the factory works and is organized. And data an analysts need to understand that. And our auditors, by the way, are in a perfect position to understand that because they are seeing so many different business units over their audit time that this is actually knowledge they can uh, absorb, right? They so as this evolves, yeah. do you envision uh, you know, d d a, a thousand data scientists blooming within the lines of business? Is that sort of the model that Siemens will take or is it, will it be a more centralized model or as Professor Weissman was saying, a hybrid approach? I think it's, it's sort of an hybrid approach where I was uh, clearly thinking that this discussion versus central versus decentral, you can have that discussion in a company of the size of 40,000 people, yeah. in a company of the size of 350,000 people, um, it's going to be decentral, yeah. yeah, because each of the business units is so big that it's a company in its own. They have a CEO and they're and, <laughs> and, 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 and for us, in the internal audit, we are a growth and development organization. So what we basically do is, we take in auditors that actually do not have auditing as a career vision. We educate them and train them for four years to be analytical consultants, to become trusted advisors, and then we develop them as, as a, a core part of our mission. We develop them into leading positions in the business units. So we are taking people training them and then sending them back into the business units to make a transformational difference out there. And that's so much nature of 
the way we work and what we do daily, that, that this is having an impact over uh, mid to long term in how Siemens develops analytical skills overall. So we're out of time, but last question is, from the standpoint of the, the technology industry, it's obviously very crowded, right? There are a lot of people trying to do predictive analytics. And What do you want to see from the technology industry that would make your life better? I can clearly say that analytics is not process driven enough, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a big promoter of uh, exactly that discipline of merging data mining and business process management, which translates actually into process mining, because that's, uh, that has a very, very concrete hook into operational business. Mm. And in many areas, data mining isn't having this hook. It's not concrete enough, it's not process driven enough, it's not actionable enough. Yeah? It, then it becomes a matter of sales forecast. Okay. Mm. Yeah. We've been doing this for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's removed from the fundamental business process. You want it embedded. Boris, a great vision, excellent perspectives. Thanks so much Thank for coming you. to theCUBE. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back right after this word. We're at Rapid Miner 2016. Wisdom, right back. This is theCUBE. <laughs>